Dave here, how are you? Uh, I'm watching on two monitors here at the moment and I'm pretty sure we're streaming live. I think we are. Today is the 25th of July, 2021, and it's a cold and blowy day. Uh, let me see. I've done all of the socials and oh, why we got really is distracting looking at myself around about 15 seconds after it's happened. <laughs> all good. Thanks for that, Russ. Uh, now, today on the show, you probably want to see some of the stuff that we've been doing before, but also going forward, we're going to be building a laundry cabinet. Now, this thing I've been wanting to build for years. I did show at the end of last uh, show the, uh, the cabinet. Um, let me see. I'm still looking at that distracting thing. I'm going to have to set the monitors up differently next week. Uh, so I showed you a video of the, the area where this cabinet is going to go. I want to do it so that I have a, um, a drawer at the bottom, a section here that's a slide out shelf for a, uh, no, up here is a slide out shelf for the laundry basket to sit on. And I'm going to put that in at such a height that it's below the door of the uh, dryer. So when I open the dryer up, I'm not going to be smashing the basket off the shelf so I can push the shelf back in and there'll be a bay underneath for the laundry basket to live in. You know, it's a very, very simple thing to do, but I think it'll be a bit of fun. And it's one of those things that as I've been wanting to do for ages. Now, let me see. I'm going to show you some pictures from last week. Now, you, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? This is the, uh, the table. I'm going to have to move these monitors. This is driving me mental. This is the, uh, actually what I'm going to do is I will turn that off. No, I'm just going to leave things. Okay, this is the, the drawing table upside down after I sprayed it and I put new casters on it. And then from there, we're going to this with it up the right way. And that's with the panel put on it uh, and screwed on. And it's looking fantastic. And then this is with all of the drawing equipment put on it now as well. And it's working really, really well. And another shot. And you'll notice that uh, some of the parts of the panel pop. And that's because it's translucent. So the window, the light from the window is coming through and illuminating the underneath of the board. And it's looking terrific. Now, I forgot to mention while I was building this that Go Natural Timbers actually gave me a piece. It's that piece on the right-hand side. That's the only piece they gave me. There was another piece they gave me for something else. But this, uh, it, thank you very much to them for doing that for me. They didn't have to do that. Uh, I bought the rest of the timber it shows. And uh, how cool is that? What do you reckon? Do you like the look of it? Um, thanks, guys. Looks stunning, absolutely beautiful. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Tipo. Thanks, Bink. Um, morning, Stevie's Woodwork. Greg, morning. Hello, everyone. All right, now, on to the show. I'm going to sh you know, I've asked you to send stuff in for people to look at. Well, I'm going to show you something else, uh, one of Vicky's paintings. She's developing this new te technique for painting, and it's coming on really, really well. So a little bit later in the show, I will show you that. Now I'm going to switch to the camera over here because I want to show you how I, because I'm an old guy, how I can handle full sheets of melamine, throw them up on here. We're going to take them over there to my table here and we're going to rip them down using the TSO uh, parallel guides. And there are links in the description box down below. And I do let everyone know that I have an affiliation with them. I use them because they're the best. So there is to it. Uh, I'll be using the GRS16PE as well for doing the docking off. The reason I'm doing that this time is last time I used the table saw, someone said to me, why aren't you using the track saw? Well, I try and share it around as much as I can. All right, let's get stuck in. I'll switch the cameras around. And there we are over here. Now, I have melamine here. You can see that there. What I'll do is I'll move this out of the way. As I said, this is how an old guy does this stuff. 
on his own. I've done videos on how to do this years ago, but I understand there's a lot of new people are watching these days, and they may not be aware of some of the videos that I've already done. So this thing here is what's called a Gorilla Gripper. And this is how you pick up big sheets of melamine. On my bench here, on my assembly table, I have this piece of aluminium, ext aluminium extrusion, and I also have this. Now this locks onto the extrusion on the second slot down, I think it is. Actually, I'll go to the third. Via a couple of T-bolts underneath. And I think if I put it about there, tighten it up. And basically, I'm going to bring that sheet over here, sit it on this foot, and lift it up. And you notice it finishes flush here. This takes all of the grunt out of picking an eight foot by four foot sheet that's covered in very, very slippery stuff. So I'll show you how this works. This opens up and locks itself on. I'll show you a little bit more in detail soon. So I pick it up. Actually, I'm gonna move that back a little bit for the moment. Give me enough room to get in there. Here we go. Swing it around, back over here. Knee against it, and down it goes. Now I can let this go and throw it on the floor. And I just tip this. Push it back, let it go. That's pretty easy, isn't it? All right, I'm gonna bring the assembly table back over. Not the assembly table, my special bench, my docking station. This is a jack of all trades thing. I love it. Now, all of these things are the same height in this workshop. And that makes life easy as well. So what I'm going to do now is just slide this across. Oh, actually, before I do that, I've got to throw my sacrificial piece on here. I have an old door that I have up here. And uh, I'll spin this around a bit this way. So we can see what's going on. Throw the door on. And this is the track saw actually cuts into this rather than cutting into my bench there. All right. Now, this is the only time where it's not the same height, it's just a little bit taller, a little bit higher. Um, All right, that's pretty good. Yep, I'm gonna have a quick read. So oh, there's a pillow under the bench. That's for the dog, Greg. <laughs> okay, um, what height? What height? What height? All right, look, I'll measure it now. The tops of all my benches, except for where I've got the capex, is, when I get that tape in there, is 860 millimetres. 860, which is uh, 33 and three quarters, basically, inches. It's the same height as my table saw. So I've worked everything to the same height as the top of my table saw. If you've got your saw on a mobile base, you might have to adjust things for that as well. All right, first thing I'm going to do is do a straight line cut. So I'll get the track. And we're going to straight line cut the other side. I'll come over there. I'm going to put a couple of 
clamps on so it doesn't go sliding. And down the other end. Right, pull it back, spin this around a little so you can see what I'm up to. When you get a sheet of this stuff from the hardware store or plywood supply company, wherever you buy this stuff from, the edge looks okay, but it's not. It's rough, it's been bumped around, it's never had a proper finish on the edge. We're going to cut a nice clean edge on it. Now, what I've done when I did the design for this unit, I made sure that the panels that I'm cutting here are going to work efficiently. This sheet is 1200 wide, so I'm going to be cutting panels slightly less than that, 584 I think they're going to be. So this is all in the design processes, process. You can save yourself a lot of money if you make things work to a sheet rather than making them a little bit bigger. So I'd have one good piece and oh, I'm stuffed on the other piece, I've got to get another sheet. Now the other thing is when you're cutting this stuff and you're cutting the edge off, Try not to just shave the edge off. Try and leave a little bit of it on the other side of the saw blade. So I'm going to, the blade on this is going to come down in line with what's called the splinter guard here. I think you can see that. And then the blade is 2.2 millimeters wide. And then I need to have about one or two millimeters on the other side. The reason being, if I don't, then the blade won't be encased in the, in the, in the wood where I'm cutting or in the sheet product. And a whole lot of the sawdust is going to blow out to the side and go everywhere. No matter what dust extraction you got, you're not going to catch it. So if you can keep the dust confined to in there, then this saw will actually collect the dust and you'll see hardly any. Just one of those little things that makes life a lot easier for you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go crazy with the amount and it doesn't matter if I'm off a little bit because I'm going to be using the parallel guides for the next cut to work off my new first cut. Okay, I'm going to clamp it in position. These are um, geared clamps underneath that slide, slide into the track. I better get myself some eye muffs. Uh, Mark, yes, it is a 16 millimeter sheet. And if you've played around with these things, you'll know they are super slippery. And they just like to slide everywhere whilst you're moving them around. It's almost impossible. Okay. Now, on the side of the saw, there's this little guy here, and it's designed to slide down like so. Now, I put it on top of the, the track first, and then I push it down so it's touching the sheet. Now, it, does, it has two purposes. One purpose that really does assist in your dust collection. It, that's, this is where all the dust is going to be coming up out of the cut. So if that's not down, there's an area for it to escape out to the right-hand side. The other thing it does is what's called a, a, a kind of a sacrificial splinter guard, and that's where the sheet, well, sorry, the knife, will, the blade will be coming up, and it holds the surface of the product you're cutting, and stops it from tearing. It works quite well. Now I've got to set the depth. You'll see here this FS, which stands. For, I'm going to tell you these things as we're going along, just at the beginning. FS stands for four inch sheen, which means four inch sheeny, I should say, which is German for guide rail. FS, Foranchini, they sing it. <laughs> Actually, I've had Germans talk to me about it and I've, they laugh their heads off when they hear my interpretation of how to say it. Um, all right, so I'm going to set this to, this is 16 millimeter thick product. FS means it's allowing for the thickness of the track that the saw is going to be running on. So I want to go maybe four millimeters through, not too many, maybe five. So let's set it to 21 odd, which is going to be back up to there. Like that, that's 22, but I don't really care. 
the saw is Bluetoothed to my uh, dust extractor and I have a lovely fitting here that was made for me by Nick Gibbons down in New Zealand and it works great. The one that he made to hold that up, not so good. <laughs> I've got it sitting on there. He's going to work around with it. it. The one he made was for his particular mask, not mine. Mine's a previous model. All right. So this doesn't take long. Let's see how we go. See much dust? Nothing. I love this setup. All right. Now I've got to go over to my plan, so we'll go over to the other uh, other camera. <sighs> Where are we? Switching cameras. There we go. Morning, Daryl. And there's not much chat happening there, so I'm guessing you're all interested in what I'm talking about. Um, I love this. I, this thing here just works so well. It saves your back. It really does. All right. What am I going to do now? I want to have a look at that plan that I drew, and I've probably lost it. Now, there it is. Because it's got my cutting list on it. Now, I was talking earlier about doing things to size. So now you can see there's my cutting list. Up the top is what I'm after. And then down below, I've drawn two panels. That's a 2.4 by 1.2 panel. See this? And there's another one down here. So this is how I break it up so I'm not wasting any product and I'm not having to go and buy another sheet. You know, they're not cheap. So I don't want to blow it. All right, so this one here, I'm going to cut two 1650s by 584. So I'm going to set the parallel guides up at 584 millimeters. Five eighty four, let me switch the cameras back again. I'll take this over with me. Now, the other thing is, when I've got it at this stage, I'm going to spin the parallel guide around. So I'm going to spin the, the track and the parallel guides around because I'm work, going to reference off this side, going back that way now. Okay, now, this is the area I'm going to be working on. What did I say? I want 584. So I flip the stop up, and I come back here. 584. I'm going to put the other specs on. These ones are good for reading the screen and all that kind of stuff, but... Uh, that's better. Lock that at 584 and the same down the other end. Cool. Pull it backwards, drop the stop, drop the stop at the other end and then just push it back. That's it. Easy. I'm going to put the clamps back on because I don't want it to slide around, even though it does have the anti-slip. That's not grabbing that one because I haven't got it far enough this way. That'll do it. Making sure I'm up in the right spot again. Cool. 
kind of getting caught up in space there. This one up. Lovely. We'll do a quick read. No, Daryl, I'm quite happy with um, I'm quite happy with what I've got doing it the way that I've done it since I was a kid, since I was an apprentice. I know all those programs are out there, but yeah. And one day maybe. All right, now it's on top of that sacrificial hollow core door, so I can now do a cut straight down through that. I'm going to make sure there's enough of it sitting here because you don't want to go through the cut and then the sheet just drop off on your foot. That would be terrible. So, the other thing is when you approach one of these things, just wrap your arm around it like that. Don't go this way. You'll see me do that now and then and go, oh, you idiot. Around the outside and there. And it's not going to go anywhere. All right, here we go. I'm going to slide it straight across to the next one and take this one off. That's ready for docking to length. When I get it out of this area here, cool. I'm going to bring it back to me. Drop that down. This is where the guides are fantastic. You set your first one up, and then after that, it's just parallel, parallel, parallel. All right, 584, 584, let's just rip it. How are we doing for time? So if you haven't got a table saw, these things work, hard, work great. You can just wheel this into the corner of the garage, grab your gear out, work away, put it all away when you're finished, put the car back. 
come back around here. And switch cameras. All right, you can watch, watch a little trick. You like that? <laughs> um, okay, where are we up to? We still got sound and everything happening. Uh, where are we? All good though. Bad memories for me with tech. All right. Okay. Um, so you're doing scoring cuts in the past. Yes, I can do that. And I didn't this time. I'm not using a melamine tape this time. I'm going to be using timber as an edge. And I'm not overly concerned if I get a little bit of chip out. Um, the cut is good or even better than tapes or almost as easy. Uh, second garage gets called to work. <laughs> Guys are bad. Okay. Um, I'll do... I might do a scoring cut. I'll show you. It does give you a much cleaner finish. And thank you for reminding me. All right. But honestly, look, it's pretty good. This really is pretty good. I'm not, I'm not overly concerned. The scoring cut is perfect though. All right, now we're going to dock it to length. And this, because it's parallel, I don't have, because it's parallel, I don't have to worry if I'm working from one end or the other. It really doesn't make any difference. A shorter track and a GRS-16 PE. These things, magic. All right, I'm going to slide it on. Lift that up, slide that onto there. That, my friends, is perfectly square. I'll dock this end off. I'm not too concerned about putting a, um, a what do you call it? <laughs> yeah, that's the official name. Well, what do you call it? Bring this over here. So you can see what I'm up to. That might work. A clamp is the word I was thinking for, looking for. A, a what do you call it? There you go. <laughs> All right, bring this over here and onto there. And we'll switch the cameras so you can see what's happening. Just going to bring it around a bit better. Cool. Goggles and eye muffs and switch the... camera. Okay, so what was mentioned earlier by um, by uh, I don't know what the name of that person is with the little baby face was a scribe cut. So let's do the scribe cut. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this back down to around about two millimeters. Remember, put my arm around here, go to the far end, cut it. In reverse, then slide it down to um, around 22, that'll do me, go forwards. And it does deliver a much better cut when I actually have it in the right spot. This is going to be fun. What you can do is you can, with these saws, 
to line up perfectly. Instead, you just push the top button forwards without pushing the bottom button, and that lets you get right back into the where you were. I went to the wrong side. I went to 18 instead of 22. Here we go. That'll do me. I'm not going to move this for the moment. There we go. Off it comes. And a beautiful cut. Now I can spin the job around and work from, I could either go to that side of the bench or I can do this. And I could use the parallel guide to measure out the distance, but it's a little bit long for it. So I'm going to use a tape and just put a mark there. Now the thing with these is the larger the pencil that you use, the larger the uh, the probability of a mistake happening. So I always keep my pencils extremely sharp. So we're going to go, this one is 1650. 1650. Beautiful. Put this on it. Now the other thing is with these things, I don't know if you can see me right there, is you do this whilst pushing against the guide, the GRS 16P, you push against it and flick it because you don't want the this stuff underneath, which is a grip tape, to hold it in the wrong position. You might just put it down and go, yeah, I'm there, but you might be out a mill or two. So you put it in, so you line up your splinter guard with the pencil mark, and then a little bit of flicky flicky, and she's good to go. We'll see if we can get this one done properly. Arm around, take it back to there. And then down to 22. Is absolutely beautiful. So that's one panel, that's one side of the unit. And whilst I've got it here, the other piece on that sheet that I was talking about is 600. See, it picks up when I'm not talking. <laughs> All right, we're going to do the same again with that piece over. I'm going to keep this. This is going to be part of the kickboard, I think. Another week. 
Uh, I was having a quick read there. Where are we? All right. Called a grippy thing. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, just reading. Okay. Now, I did say that I was going to show you uh, what Vicky's been up to. There we go. Not bad, is it? She's getting quite good at these paintings. I love them. Uh, and back here. What do you think? It's pretty cool. Here comes Ask Me How and a link. Ben, I'm not sure I don't understand what's, what's happening there. Hello from USA. David, the Sunday is fine. Sunday's great. All right, I'm going to grab that other sheet. We won't be doing any work with the domino today, I don't think. Uh, we'll do all of the, that kind of setup next week. Don't lose that. Whew, nearly trod on it. All right, the other panel. All right. The grippy thing. Where is it? Here it is. All right. I'm guessing. I'm guessing uh, people were talking about this thing. Now this is for picking up sheets of ply, what have you, anything. So basically, it hooks over like that, and then you just pick it up and it grabs a hold. Now it can be that size or it can be this size here or it can be a full size sheet. So this thing, it's good because it's not, you're not doing this kind of thing. It's on the height of the sheet and I just push up with my body rather than just straining one section. And uh, you know, it makes life easy. Okay. Reading down through here. Uh, lots of talent. Yep. Um, okay, bronze for Australia. You're watching the Olympics at the same time. Good on you. All right, going to dock this one down. And how are we doing for time? 22. That's cool. I'm happy. There. And spin her around to this one. Touch up. Didn't quite scribe deep enough there for a second. I'm going to do to save this being so boring I'm going to do a cut without using the dust extraction and you have a look at the difference and then you might appreciate how much this why I love the festival gear not this one I'll do the next one 1650 
Yeah. Um, I'll do a, uh, a link in the description box below for a Gorilla Glip. Gorilla Glipper? <laughs> gorilla Gripper. So if you want to grab one, just to check the descript video description. And away you go. So we'll do this one first, and then I'll do the next cut. Look out. Another side panel. So it's both the sides done and the top. This next one is going to be the base and that's the outside of the thing finished. And all as accurate as a table saw. Uh, 600. All right. Dust extraction off for this one. Gone. You watch it come out of here. <laughs> I'm crazy. Um, I'm going to have to put this on for it. Because it, it just goes mental. Oh, the other week when I was doing the spray painting, someone made a comment, Dave, you should just tell people it's not just a dust, dust mask. This has got P3 filters in it, which are fine for that kind of uh, spray paint. This can take P3 or P2s, so I have P3s in it. All right, you ready? We'll do the reverse cut to start. And the main one. Look at it. Everywhere. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, here. Thanks for that, Peter. Uh, this is a uh, trend. Um, mask. So again, the, I get this from Carbotech. That's where, you know, in Australia I grab them from. I'll put a link in the description again for this as well for if you want. If you want. These are a great mask. Okay. <sighs> Everywhere. All right, that's my two, that's my top, the bottom, and both sides. Now, I think I've got enough time. I've, I want to cut the back as well, so I'm going to put the other piece up on here. Yes, so I've got to get that big sheet and put it up here. You can see the uh, Gorilla Gripper in action again. Yeah, I'm not wanting to sound needy or anything as far as the links are concerned, but it does help. You know, it's not costing you anything to watch the show. And it does, it takes me a long time to set it up. So if you can use the links, it's much appreciated. But I'm not going to lose any sleep if you don't. All right, now move this one back again. Out of the way.
I'll show you the mess on the floor in a second from having not used the dust extraction. All right. You can watch it from the front this time. I'll pick the sheet up and bring it around so you can see what I'm talking about. This is an eight foot by four foot sheet and it probably weighs around 30, 30 odd kilos, but I'm not really busting my guts. This is all in line. I use my legs to, to do the lift. I'm not doing any kind of hernia problem. All right, I'm gonna spin it around. See, I get underneath and then lift, spin. I'm back over here until it's there with my knee. Throw that on the ground and then tip. Where are you? There we go. Cool. And slide. And drop that. I love it. These over here. And the saw. Put it on top of the dusty. Now this one's got to be bigger. Bring it over. And rotate this. And we've got a straight line the other side. So I can get this out. Actually, I'll straight line it from this side. And I'm not going to do anything stupid like um, <laughs> not have the dust extraction on anymore. That's just, that's just silly. Uh, where's the other clamp? No, I'll grab another one from here. And when I'm using the dust extraction, there's no real need for me to wear a mask with this. You know, it's, just, it's that good. We'll do a reverse. And you watch how it goes. Goggles. Makes a little bit of noise. Going off the 141 this morning, just might have to wait a bit longer. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, I can't believe, I can't believe what happened in Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane yesterday. I just, I feel sorry. I, I just feel sorry for these people that are doing this kind of thing. Well, I'm not going to make any more comment about it. It's just all the people that have put themselves in a position where they're going to, you know, stop socialising, all that kind of stuff. And then these <sighs> disbelief. Anyway, here we go. I'm going to do it the other way this time. Left hand over there, straight over that. You see that? Under, over, 
and on. I'm at one millimetre, or two millimetres maybe. Down to 22, 23. Beautiful, no dust. We're very fortunate to having workshops or a hobby. I feel, and if you own your own home, you know, I feel very, very sorry for the people that don't, um, that don't, that, that are renting and also uh, in this situation, not ordinarily, and they're, they can't get to work, you know, family, things are going to be tough. But what's, what's the alternative? What, what's the, people keep dying all over the place? I know I said I wasn't going to say anything, but it just got, gets my goat up. Spin this around and we're going to adjust those parallel uh, guides again to the new dimension, which will be very quick, and very easy. Let's spin this camera around this way. Out there, I think. Uh, mouse, there you are. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I, I understand that. But Kiwi, I don't understand what you're saying there. Um, camera three. I'm going to put this down so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Coming as close as I can. I'm down to there. That'll work. All right. Now, the dimension for this one, when I find the layout. This is the layout. And we've done that shoot. That's all finished. So now we've got to do a 1650 by 634. So I've got to set these at 634 millimeters. Okay. 630. Four. I'm down. I'll do the other one. I'm down. And then just push, push it up into position. Cool. All right, bring this camera back again. There we go. Um, clamp this end. Got it.
Down to this end for the reverse. That's the cut really I should have done without the dust extraction to show you how crazy it would have been. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. Back to this one. Do another quick read. Uh, this is, Scott, this is um, the TSC. It's not an anti-kickback or anything like that. This is just the TSC. Um, so 55 cordless. Um, Spring Jordan, and I've overtaken half the two car garage Ross with it. Makes this. Yes. <laughs> uh, Bianca. All right. Uh, I'm going to dock this to length. And then this will be that that's the back. And then I've got a couple of other things I'm going to cut up, not uh, on the show, but I'll do it later on today. And then, oh, so the other thing I was going to say is my offcut now is less than 584. So remember, I, I said it's important to lay things out correctly and to adjust you, your project if you can. To economize on the sheet. So that piece on the back here, which is my offcut, is still going to be used for the other two shelves and possibly parts of the drawer. All right, where are we up to? Look, I think that might do it. Coming up to 12 o'clock, let me have a read. Uh, do you enjoy your work? Uh, this is Tippo asked me. Asked me uh, so many times I replied, saying yes. I say I can't remember the book saying wrong. All right, okay. So regarding work, my father-in-law said to me once, Dave. He said, it "Doesn't matter what you're doing, if you enjoy it, it's not work. So if you can earn your money doing something that you enjoy, well, that's great. I I've always enjoyed woodworking." Um, and I enjoy it now more than when I was relying on it for an income. And so I'm in a really happy place as far as going into retirement is concerned. All right, let me see. So during the week, I'm going to do a little bit more. And then next week, I'm going to make a jig for the domino to actually do plunge mortises that will, will help big time. And it's using the TSO Bigfoot they do have how to do it on their website. So if you want to have a look, follow the links in and uh, you'll see they've got it already set up on the Bigfoot. So uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting, interesting little jig and very easy to make. Let me have a read here. All good, Bianca, yep, worked out. Duh, duh. All right. Thanks everyone for uh, watching. I'm going to have the Patreon meeting in a minute after the show. Uh, and we've had a uh, couple of new patrons come in and join us, which is always good. If you want to do that, you have to become a patron, and uh, if you want to, totally up to you. We just talk rubbish. <laughs> okay, then. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall see you all week. See you later. Bye.